bitch, I'm on a rampage mask on my damn face. Rob Vasquez here, Capcom Bass Sports. Miss my friend from the West Coast, Iman. Iman, you been like fighter. So, businessman himself. Uh, and uh, he's uh, got qu quite a journey, quite a story, and we're gonna we're gonna discuss several topics today. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing wonderful. Yeah, where you at right now? Thank you, friend. You're welcome. Where you at right huh? now? Where you at right now? I, well, I am outside of my uh, the gym that I train at in Orange County. Oh, so. California, California. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's good, man. So, what'd you do today, man? Uh, I just got out of a intense boxing uh, training session. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so trying to fine tune my, uh, my, uh, my striking game. So, right. you know, yeah, it's about good. putting it all together. Yeah. You got to put it all together. You got to definitely be sharp on, on all levels, especially nowadays, the way it's, it is now. You have so, so many things, you know, but, and, and it's, it's, it's such a high level now, you know, that you have to have everything really, really sharp and all your tools and, you know, you see these guys. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, so what do you, um, what do you, um, what do you walk around at usually before before fight time? Or whatnot? Uh, usually I tend to walk around at about. Uh, I like to walk about 10, 15 pounds outside my weight class, honestly. But uh, considering with uh, the COVID lockdown and everything, uh, I've walked around. I'm like, I'm 55 pounds over my weight class. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get back down right now. I'm currently about 95. Uh, so I got about 30 pounds to drop. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see what happens uh, yeah, well, right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Good. But the thing is, this time around, I actually have more muscle on me than the last time I was at this weight. So it's going to be interesting this time when i get back to my uh weight class you know right right so so yeah the so so yeah that covid uh thing has affected so many people on different levels you know and, and uh yeah I, i've been i put on some weight myself a little, mm, but uh yeah so um what how's this how's the fight scene out there in california and and, and well how do, right now mm -hmm. and how do you well, make it work every, for you? Well, right now, like, from my understanding, there's some things, like, starting back up to open back up. California, as far as the, you know, amateur scene is concerned, it's kind of opening back up. Um, certain counties are more, you know, uh, opening up quicker than others. Like, if we go to Northern California, they'll probably be the first ones to really have events out there because exactly. they – the population up there above San San Francisco is really not that high. Uh, so, you know, less condensed populations usually mean, you know, less uh, COVID restrictions. Yeah. So um, also from uh, the state I came from, Nevada, uh, that's possibly going to be opening up around, um, I'm hearing July or August. Uh -huh. So, you know, there's, there's, there's other states that are open up uh, like way before, you know, California and stuff like that, which is, you know, um, Florida, you got, you got South Dakota, North Dakota. I mean, of course those places are going to be open in uh, Montana because there's really no people there, yeah. you know? So it's really less, it's less likely for you to like catch COVID and those states, well, okay, maybe Florida, I'm sorry. Florida, you know, the numbers were a little high out there too. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, obviously certain states are going to open up be before others. Uh, Utah was uh, open up and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, before the uh, COVID lockdown happened, I had a fight scheduled in um, Nevada, but you know, for May of last year, but it, you know, it, everything closed down because of COVID. Right. And then when I got the fight moved to Utah, 
uh, Utah, it was um, the fight was canceled because uh, my opponent really didn't uh, get his medical paperwork done properly. Uh. So, so yeah, I would have fought at least once last year if it wasn't for, you know, my opponent having medical paperwork issues, you know, going on with him and the commission. Up yeah. There. Yeah. Was, yeah. That can be tough. Um, wow. So, so when you, when you, uh, you, you're part of a group, you got a few friends, uh, right. That, uh, you're part yeah. of. Yeah. So, so the thing is me and a group of friends, we, uh, we trained together out in, um, Las Vegas for a time. We were training at, uh, a few places we trained together at one place and then uh, we left the one place uh, to pursue our own, you know, personal goals. And with our experience between us, we decided, well, let's just form our own squad. So no matter where we are at, we can, um, you know, we always get together and we train together. So for me, uh, you know, I have, I have so many years in this game. I've been training since 2009. I I made my MMA debut in uh, 2014. Uh, I would have made it sooner than 2014, but, you know, injuries kept me uh, out the game. And then from 2014 to 2016, my second fight was a two-year layoff because I moved to Vegas. Um, I wanted a time to adjust. And then I, you know, I fought my uh, fight for King of the Cage in Las Vegas. Uh, so my, you know, my record is, you know, not the best. I'm two, three, I'm two, three and one. But honestly, I'm two fights away from a decent record, you know. And uh, right now, it's just for me, realistically, if I were to fight right now, it would have to be at super heavyweight. Because, right, you know, because I don't believe in um, fast weight cuts, you know. Yeah, dangerous. I'd rather get there, I'd rather get there gradually and, um, you know, properly than have to cut, like, 40, 50 pounds at one time. Right. Like, uh, for my King of the Cage fight, when I fought in Las Vegas, I started my weight cut at 305. I was 305 three weeks out from my fight at heavyweight. Wow. And so I had to do the fastest That's weight cut I've pounds, ever done right? in my life. I, I ran. I had like uh, boiled eggs, um, salad, all that kind of stuff just to drop the weight. And within that amount of time, I went from three, 305 to 261 for my king of the cage fight and that was like my second fight honestly i love fighting for king of the cage because i love the way uh you know the uh matchmaker at the time was really treating the uh the fighters and all that yeah that's real important how important is that to you treatment of the fighters well to me it's like this like i understand on you know that the um promoters of course, you got to sell tickets. You know, you got to, you know, you got to put yourself out there. You got to sell tickets. You got to get people interested in, you know, watching you fight. And so for me, everybody got their philosophy, you know. Right. Um, I, I, you know, I like for my uh, fight that I fought in Utah, uh, dude, it was, I had a lot, I had, I had some people show up there for me because I lived in Utah at one point. Right. I was the away fighter, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I go, I get myself out there as, you know, as an amateur because I feel that that's important. Yeah. So, what I tell other amateur fighters is this. For me, it's, I have my goals. And my thing is, if my, if your ideology doesn't align with my goals, then I guess we got we got to, you know, go our separate ways. You know, there's no hard feelings. There's no, there's, you know, no animosity, but I just feel that, you know, our goals are different. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some, some, you know, coaches out there, you know, feel 
like it's like, you know, yeah, loyalty, you know. And when you talk about loyalty, loyalty to me is a two way street. You know what I'm saying? You know, when you look at it, your coach can make money four different ways off of you throughout your entire time with him. Number one, when you go to the gym, you pay your dues. Number two, you're going to do personals. Number three, if anybody comes in there from, uh, from the news or the media and they're advertising their gym, you could be shot. They could take a picture of you in the gym and you're on their website. So you're like, you're free publicity for them. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they make money off of you that way. Right. And number four, when you, when you fight for them, obviously you pay the money out of your purse. And so, so my thing is, you know, loyalty is a two-way street. It, it got to benefit both of us. You know what I'm saying? So me, I carry myself like, I treat myself like a business, like a brand. You know what I'm saying? You if you want brand. to invest into my brand. Mm-hmm. Huh? You are your brand. Yeah, if you want to invest into my brand or my, or my LLC, whatever you want to call it, then we got to have a conversation. We got to come to some type of arrangement to where it works out for the both of us, because I've been seeing a lot of fighters, you know, some fighters just like give their full, you know, all to their coaches, you know, give their heart and soul, whatever, whatever the coach needs, pay them all the money, take money out of their purse and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like freaking boot camp. You know what I'm saying? They're like a drill sergeant. Mm -hmm. Some of these coaches, you know, Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, to me, it's like, yeah, you're imparting knowledge onto me. I get it. But at the same time, I'm paying you for you to impart that knowledge on. You know what I'm saying? So I go to you to, you know, gain the knowledge and the wisdom to be able to apply that application in a, um, in the cage. So to me, as I said, it's really a two way street, but that's why I kind of like do my thing to where, I'm kind of solo, but I have different relationships. You know what I'm saying? Like um, when you watch a bodybuilding competition, right? Mm -hmm. When they win their bodybuilding competition, do you see them say, you know, I like to give a shout out and thank my, uh, thank 24 hour fitness or goals gym for me being up here today. (laughs) Not really. (laughs) I haven't. Yeah. So you know, so for me, it's I, I treat myself like a business. I treat myself like a brand now. Now with the big boy squad, we hold each other accountable. We make we make money together. And, um, you know, we split we split the pot. We're all you know, we're all grown men here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We're going to do what we want. And um, but we still hold each other accountable like um one of the one of the coaches, uh, you know, my boy shown up. Um, he's one of the coaches with the big boy squad. You know, he hits what's his me name? up. He's what's like, his name? Did you go to training today? Yeah, what's his name? Oh, he goes by show showing up the master. That's what he goes by. <laughs> I'm gonna like the last dragon. Yes. <laughs> that's yes, cool. just like the last dragon. That's gangster. Ah, <laughs> uh, bro. Yeah, I like that. So, so he, he, you know, he's a He's a purple belt, a, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu purple belt. Right. You know, we're all about making uh, money and, you know, getting what's ours. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we still put in work. We still train. I still go and I train with um, other, you know, professional fighters, amateur fighters. I put in the work. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, you know, I'm independent and I just, you know, I don't have a set schedule or anything. I'm still disciplined. You know, but at the end of the day, I feel that if I get into a working relationship with a gym to where they want me to use the name, we got to have some type of, you know, arrangement here. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's when it comes to MMA. Now for jujitsu, it's totally different because it's like, really, you got to be, how can I put it? You got to be under somebody or with an organization or something. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Jiu-jitsu, you can't really freelance. You know, MMA, you can. You know what I'm saying? You can freelance a little bit. 
But it's like I tell fighters, you know, fighters that I know when they ask me for advice, I just say, look, you know, if it doesn't work out for you, if you feel that your trainer or your coach is not giving you what you feel is going to help you get to that next level. Exactly. Then, and it's not aligning up with your goals, then find somebody that will help you get to your goals. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like some fighters, they, they don't put themselves out there. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, some fighters don't do their media work. They expect their coaches or their managers to go out and find interviews for them. Everything I do, I, I did on my own. I did it myself. As far as I get my name out there, like you could look me all, you could look, you could look my name up on Google as far as, you know, media work. I have a media print all over the internet. You know what I'm saying? And um, I feel that's important, man. It's like, you got to treat yourself like a business. You got to have, of course, you're going to have to have people invest in you and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but you got to treat yourself like a business. Right. And, um, and it's just, it's just sad to me when I see, you know, some coaches treat their, you know, their fighters like prop like it's their property or something like that. And it's really not the case. You know, it shouldn't be the case because there's really good coaches out there. Don't give me Yeah, wrong. oh no, that's there's, that's quite a few. It, it's like know, everything else. Really, yeah. Yeah. There there's really good coaches out there, but I feel that there are some that really feel that they're, you know, jujitsu student or MMA student or whatever. Right. It's like they're their property, you know, and it's like yeah, then that's like not, that's you do what I fly. you do you. It's like you do you do what I say, not as I do type of thing. And and me, it's like no. At the end of the day, I'm a grown ass man. Sorry, I didn't mean to cuss. Hey. Uh, I'm a grown hey. person. Uh huh. And and I should be able to make my own decisions, and uh, we should be cool with that. As long as I am putting in work, I'm not disrespecting you personally or or I'm paying you dues and all that kind of stuff, then it really shouldn't matter exactly. what I do or when I do it, as long as I right. as long as I, you know, don't use your name. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why when when it comes to MMA or, you know, I kind of keep myself in a freelance situation yeah yeah it, it yeah. works for you because uh I, I think you've seen uh it's it's more well obviously more financially look lucrative for, for this time and you feel like you have more freedom right. like, to do things yeah like honestly like financial. if i have a connect if i have a connection like you know if like my my friend showing up finds me a fight he's like hey he's like hey bro this fight right here it's like I get you on, you know, the winner, they say this is a $2,000 purse, you know, $2,000, you know, the show, 2000 if you win, that's four grand. And, you know, me, I'm like, of course, I'm going to give you 20% uh, of my purse because you found that fight for me. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I'm not going to just say, oh, okay, I'm going to take the fight and I'm not going to give you your cut. No. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's only right, yeah. It's just like, as I said, yeah. It's like if I choose to take that fight, I'm going to give you your cut. But you're going to, but you know, you're not, if, you know, but you're not going to tell me, hey, you got to take this fight, yada, yada, yada. You know what I'm saying? Because there are some coaches out there who, who talk at their fighters. Now, my thing is, tell me why this fight will benefit me. You know what I'm saying? And if the fight benefits me, then yeah, you know, we'll discuss it weigh the pros and cons and the, the pros weigh more than the cons. Yeah. Then I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know, some coaches want to talk at their, you know, talk at their fighters. And That's never you know, good. I just don't, I just don't, it's never good. I just don't agree with that. Yeah. You know, cause I, 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 you know? I do know some, some, you know, I'm a trainer myself, but I, I do know some coaches that, are really really great coaches i mean really great but on all uh -huh. levels because they connect someone you're training right. with it's not just about okay do this exercise or do this drill or do this this or whatever right but the connection how was your day how's it right. this because you want to know what's going on you know with each other and here and you know because it's you could train your body to do a lot of things 
but if your mind is not right, then it's to no avail. So, and and as and and they're really really great coaches about. Um, but I've I've, yeah. known, I've known some that are not so great either. Um, the, the, they they're in their own category. Oh, man. But the, but the, the, right, the they, right, they're like right. like what you say is like they connect. They're respectful. They, it, it's it's like a it's like a family, you know. And they treat each other well. Right. Treat the fighters well. Right. And uh, it's it's you like, can see, you yeah, can see the relationship. Like, you know, it's a good one. Yeah, to me, it's like I get I get the whole family relationship, unity, and all that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. but you know, just don't tell me that oh you're doing this or you know. And that's final type, you know, stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about because some, you know, there's coaches out there who want to say their, their, their academy is like a family and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I've seen, I've seen coaches, you know, when a student leaves their academy, all of a sudden, you know, they, they shame their student, slam them, run them through the wall and try to, you know, damage their reputation. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute. So how did you go from, this kid, this student is like my family to just because he left because he decided that your program wasn't working and say he didn't even say anything negative about you. You decide to sham him and make sure that everybody knows about it and that no, that everybody's going to know about it. So when you go to the next gym, they're going to be like, yeah, I heard about you. You know what I'm saying? Because there are coaches out there that are like that. They want to make sure that you do not make mm -hmm. any type of money or as or they try to damage your reputation to the point to where they make you seem like the bad guy for uh leaving them. Yeah. yeah or they make you appear to be the bad guy because they you know because they may you know kick you out because you, you you said like I don't agree with that approach. You know what I'm saying? It's it's like that for me. Yeah sometimes it's just not a fit you gotta find a fit, and it has to be both sides. You know, the 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 the, the uh, shoe. Oh, yeah. The, the, the foot has to fit the shoe. You know, it's just it's just two parts involved. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. and and, I mean, and yeah. My yeah. And and you know the crazy thing is, like I've been I've been at places to where you know I've been I've been part of the whole politic game and all that kind of stuff, and like you know. It's even when I was doing um, jujitsu years ago at this place I was training at, even though I felt like I was at a certain level with, uh, with some of the other students, like those students were progressing at a way faster rate than me. And I'm just like, wait a minute, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I, you know, I left that place, you know, I, I wish them well and everything and I'm glad they're doing well now, yeah. but it's just like, um, I just feel like whenever I, it's like, if I'm being politicked on, like, I don't agree with it. Like, I'm not, I'm like, no, I'm not about to, not about to kiss your ass, not about to uh, play kiss up or anything. You know, you respect me. I respect you. That's the way it goes. Respect is a two way street. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel that, you know, there, there's some fighters out there who want to, you know, worship their, their coaches and all that kind of stuff because they hold them to such a high level. And I get that. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, respect is a two way street, you know, mm -hmm. you know, have some, have some dignity, you know what I'm saying? Don't be kissing your coach's ass all the time. Don't be sorry. I mean, but I'm sorry, I cut it again. All right. uh, hey man, nope. this is it's, it's, it's a fighter show, man. We we're gonna talk, but uh, yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's like don't be don't be kissing your coach's feet all the time and yeah. stuff like that, man. Just you know, tell your coach how you feel. Like, look, coach, I see what you're saying. I don't agree. I I love you. I respect you. I just don't agree with this approach, right? And here's the reason. You know what why. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why. And if you're and if you're so afraid that your coach is going to kick you out the gym just because you you stated your opinion and your feelings on the situation, then obviously that is not the right coach for you. Yeah, obviously everything's a, a fit. So, yeah, but I see that now, you know, we, we talk and, and, you're, and you're moving along or better. You're very you're, you're comfortable at, at what you're doing now. 
at your approach. You're a bit of an entrepreneur. You have a little plan going on. And I know that you have a podcast coming out soon that you're working on. Um, I think that's going to go well for you. Um, let me ask you on the, on the, just on the pro scene recently, right? We just had a, well, a mm-hmm. great, great fight at, at the UFC with um, Steve Miocic and uh, uh-huh. versus, uh, Francis Ngannou, who's, who's now the heavyweight champion there. Um, Wow, and 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 that was a great fight because that guy that guy has got two cannons in his hands. That, but he but he did everything in 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 my opinion that you know that that he needed to do the win, and he he was obviously working on a lot of things from their last fight. What he needed to do, and uh-huh. what's your take on that, man? Well, this is my take. You know, online I was seeing the odds. You know, a lot of people. If, even in the first fight, they were, you know, looking at Francis Nogani as the favorite. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh my gosh, Stipe is going to get killed. Mm-hmm. You no, know, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. And Stipe was the underdog, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and Stipe went in there and he was the better man that night. Exactly. Now, this time around, there were people saying that, you know, some people felt like, oh yeah, Stipe is going to kill him. You know, Francis don't have no ground game. All he is, all he has is that one punch hit or quitter type thing. Mm-hmm. And everybody thought that Steve Bay was just going to, you know, wrestle, wrestle, you know, wrestle bully him or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't the case. I told people, I'm like, look, Fra- uh, Francis trains at Extreme Couture in Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm-hmm. Those boys are grinders over there. Yeah. I trained over there. Yeah. There's some, you know, there's some fighters over there that would kill most fighters. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, you got, you got uh he's a middleweight slash welterweight Ryder Newman over there. Uh you got you got freaking uh Carl Badwater over there, who's a dang American jiu-jitsu black belt under Jake Shields. Um, you got you got so many fighters over there, you know. Yeah. And and he worked on his ground um, game, obviously. To the point where like, he yeah, he worked on his um mm-hmm. he worked on his ground game so much as wrestling. I mean, I saw him in action, man. It's like, and like when people were amazed, like, oh my gosh, he's sprawled and actually went and took Stipe down. I'm like, why are you guys shocked? You act like he wasn't working on that. So yeah. to me, that lets me know a lot that there are, you know, there are, there, there are casual fans in the sport. I get of course. it. Of course. And then there's real fans. Like real fans know that uh, where Francis was training, what he was doing, they were following his career. Yeah. And, you know, at, as I said, at Extreme Couture, you know, they got some really good fighters. You know, my um, I got a friend down there named uh, Jamal Harris. Uh, he's going to be coming back on the scene, make, doing his thing as well, man. There's so many great there's so many great athletes over at Extreme Couture out there, man. Like uh, when I went out there to Vegas last time on a trip, I went to um, – extreme couture and i think uh francis was finishing up his camp i'm like damn the man's muscles have muscles i was looking at this guy i'm just like yeah he's not built like an average guy walking around his weight he's built like a yeah he was middle weight or welterweight he's just he's 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 put the he's yeah And and the thing is you know he worked out in the sand mines and you know the man's a freaking like athlete you know what yeah. I'm saying? Came from and as I said, tough what I seen, too. you know, I seen Francis. I it's like I seen Francis on the ground with you know, freaking as I said, Carl Badwater. He's a he's a uh, jujitsu black belt. Many guys who were high level grapplers, and you know, Francis was you know doing his thing with him on the ground and controlling them. So it's just like when people, you know, he just. You know, Francis just prefers to knock people out. And I get that. But if Francis needed to grapple, he would grapple. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he works with freaking uh, world-renowned striking coach Dewey Cooper. Yeah. It's like. Dewey Cooper, yeah. The man and Eric Nixon, man. And it's like. Yeah. Eric, yeah. It's like people, casual fans don't understand the work that it goes into being like a world-class athlete. Yeah. You know what I'm it's, saying? It's, there's no some of us, park, man. some of us work two or three jobs just to, you know, get to the level 
of where, you know, Nogano is and um, or just to be in the UFC, you know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly. And, and Stipe is uh, no slouch like at all. Bellator and one of the heavyweight ever, you know, yeah. in there. He's but but yeah, whether it's Bellator or UFC, the work that it takes to get there, you you know, it's it's it's, it's amazing and, and the and the uh sacrifices. You know, you know all too well, you know, the sacrifices you gotta it, 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 Oh man, it is such a sacrifice. Like, you know, when I met my wife and I told her what I do and everything. And, um, you know, at first I really thought of my man, if I had to settle down and get married, you know, I'm afraid that, you know, <laughs> my wife to be, you know, would tell me you can't do the sport no more. And I said, dang, I may be single forever or something like that. <laughs> but, you know, when we're, yeah. when we're in the courting uh, process and all that kind of stuff, she just said, yeah, you know, I support you on your goals. I support you being the fighter and all that kind of stuff. And that's what I love my wife for. You know, she supports me and my, my goals and I support her and what she does. And, that's you know, good. that's, that's what it's about. That, that, that in and of itself is a, is a level of success right there, which some people who are at the high level of fighting or other, or other, other uh, high levels in, in life don't even have that, that right there is a blessing right there. And, 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 and is a success in and of itself. Um, wow. So now the sacrifices, like we were talking about, you said he was in those mines over there and he escaped. He, he, and he, he went through a whole bunch of stuff where he was homeless, homeless, lived in a, in a car, in a little parking lot, just going through things. And to get to where he is now, you know, it just shows how, how strong his spirit is, where he could have took that loss and said, oh, well. May I'll never be able to beat this guy. If you put that type of stuff in your head, then you'll never be able to do that. Then it might transfer trans over to other things. Trans but he showed that he was a way better fighter than, than the first time. And uh, Stipe is an amazing athlete, an amazing fighter, and, and great. But I definitely, uh, it was definitely the, the Francis Ngannou show. Now the next thing, John... Johnny Bones Jones wants wants his fight. Right. A lot of people are saying, "Well, he's afraid to fight." I don't think he's afraid at all. I think he wants his money. Well, he wants the money to be well, right this, for him to fight. That's all. Right. This this is my thing about people saying John Jones is afraid to to fight or I don't to think fight so. no game. That's the thing, you know. And even though Derek Lewis said what he said that I'll take the fight at this for amount, my, my thing is John Jones. Whether you love him or you hate him. He has defended the light heavyweight title so many times. Mm -hmm. He had to leave. You know, <laughs> that he finally, you know, he's like, okay, I'm going to move up a division finally. You know, the man's been fighting, like, since he was 20 years old. You know what I'm saying? And um, he's still young in the game. He's not, he's not old. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is for, for you know, casual fans to say John Jones is scared. It's like, there's so much it's that goes realistic. into it. There's so much that goes into a fight, you know, like there's the training camp, there's a preparation the nutrition, uh, the schedule, everything, you know, John Jones earned what John Jones is at the place he's at in life because he worked hard and he got there. I agree. And to me, he's not asking for anything he shouldn't be getting. Yeah. You know, and when you, when you see, Fighters like Conor McGregor go over to boxing, make about a hundred million dollars, come back to MMA. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The thing is, you know, there's fighters who've been wanting to do super fights for years. The, the Diaz brothers wanted to go to boxing. Dana said no. Um, I think Nogano wanted to, I think he wants to fight Tyson Fury. That's a maybe. John Jones wanted to possibly go and cross over to boxing. But it's like, you know, the UFC said no. So my thing is this. If the UFC is such the best promotion in the world, the athletes make a ridiculous ton of money, they're a billion-dollar company, then why isn't there mega superstars like, you know, John Jones, their champions? Why are all their champions either, you know, I, like, example, you know, Stipe, 
he still firefights, but I get that. He's doing that for a living. But to me, it's like, if you're in the top 10 of the UFC and you're, you're making this ridiculous amount of money, it's like, why the hell are some of these fighters still working at Starbucks and Kmart and CBS if uh, Dana White says you make million, you make a lot of money in the UFC as a fighter? And then why would you have uh, places, you know, companies like Reebok and Venom, you know, have, you know, sponsor their athletes? You know what I'm saying? It's like. I couldn't stand it. I just can't stand when Dana White says stuff like that because if that was the case, fighters wouldn't need to be working like a second or third job. You know, when I look at boxing, and this is why a lot of MMA fighters want to cross over to box. In boxing, within I want to say seven to ten fights, you make enough to where that becomes your job. You're, you're, you're well enough off if you win, of course. Within seven to ten fights, you are getting money by ESPN. You're on all those boxing networks and all that kind of stuff. And me, I even thought about crossing over into boxing. I may, I may want to be a multi-sport athlete because my thing is, hell, I'll fight, you know, any MMA fighter at heavyweight would box Tyson Fury for, you know, a couple million dollars, you know what I'm saying? Because that's enough money for them to just do whatever they want. You know what I'm saying? So I get where to bring it back to uh, the Conor McGregor situation. We the people fight want to fight Conor McGregor because they know he's a pay per view attraction. You know, Dustin Poirier is going to get his money. Oh, I course. don't, I don't blame him one bit. Me neither. You know, you can always go for that title after, know, but. To put that McGregor fight exactly. That's, I mean, that's the money fight. You know? Exactly. Like, why not? And then it's like there were some fighters who acted like uh, you know Conor McGregor was being um, freaking um, childish or whatever the case may be. He got people to watch, and that's what counts. You know, he, I, that's what and counts. you know, and so even though, even though. Could be beat Conor McGregor. He had the biggest payday of his entire career. Yeah, like up until up until uh, could be fought Conor McGregor. Like I'm going to be honest, I kind of knew who he was, but not on that on a high enough level. I okay. know he's a wrestler out of Russia, out of Didakistan, and all that kind of stuff. I know he was with American Kickboxing, but other than and you know he was a teammate of uh, Daniel Cormier, but other than that. I really didn't like know who he was. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it's like social media is a necessary uh, thing to do. You got to do your media work. If you don't do your media work. People are not going to know who you are. No. And when you go and you sell tickets and all that kind of stuff, people be like, okay, I may go watch you, whatever. You know, you may get your family there and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, best believe I want my family at my fights. But they're not always going to be there. You know, you got to create that fan base that's always going to tune in. And I'm like, okay, I'm fighting on this day. And, you know, here's the link to purchase tickets for the pay-per-view stream so I could get, you know, so the promotion knows that you're watching because of me. You see what I'm saying? And that's what it's, that's what it's all about. You got to build a fan base, you know. Of course. And with, you know, and with my, and with the big boy squad, which I'm a part, you know, you got, you know, I got my friend showing up. There's me. Uh, there's my other friend, um, Trent, who's also a super heavyweight. He was going to be fighting for a um, for a title at the promotion in uh, Las Vegas at one point before, you know, everything kind of shut down. And, uh, you know, there's my friend Jamal. Like, all of us always do our media work. Even even our um, one of our boys, uh, Trap, he, the man... The man was on Dr. Phil. He has his own, you know, T-shirts going on with the Made Life brand. Um, you know, he's he does LFC events in uh, Las Vegas. And I know a lot of people dislike him, whatever the case may be. But the thing is, you're speaking his name. He's making money. Conor McGregor, whether you love him or you hate him. Yeah. He's making money, whether you like him or not. Exactly. Whether you say he's Don't a good fighter or whether you say he's a bad fighter, mm-hmm. 
He's making money. And yeah, you know, you know his name. If you're speaking his name, saying his name, he can't be a bad fighter because nobody does what he did and can't fight. It just doesn't right. make you, – you can't be, right. be like a terrible yeah. fighter and go do what he did. It just doesn't make sense. You know, but it's hard to – Yeah, it just like doesn't Marvin, make sense. Like, it's you remember like what Marvin said, Hagler said? Like, to me, it's like – with the silk pajamas, uh-huh. how it's hard to, to get up and run and train with the silk pajamas. <laughs> it's harder, but I don't know. But I think uh, McGregor, he has that competitive spirit. Yeah, but you wake up one day, you're on this side and you're hungry, but then the other day, you're on a yacht. You got all this stuff going on. And, you know, he he, he wears many hats, but I, I think it'll be a great fight. I think the third, the third fight will definitely, it's definitely going to play out differently than the, than the, um, than, um, yeah, it'll be different than the well, second fight. So they had, they both have to make adjustments. I think, I think honestly, I love Dustin to death. You know, he's a really good fighter. I've been yeah, following like his career a little bit. I think, I, I think this time around, Connor gets it done. I think he checks the kick. Uh, Connor, Connor just, you know, uh, count, you know, Connor just, you know, he was just caught slipping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not going to say Dustin got lucky with a lucky punch because there is no lucky punch in this sport. No, you know what I'm saying? Punch. I just think, I just think Connor was caught slipping. You know, he had an off night, you know, but I think with the kind of work he's putting in this camp, I feel that he'll do just enough to win the, win the fight against um, 48, you know, yeah. I feel that if, if it goes the distance, Conor McGregor is going to win by like split decision. You yeah. know, uh, if it's um, if it ends, if Conor ends it within three rounds, I say it would be TKO. Yeah, I yeah, that's that's that, that that's good. I think that, and some people may disagree, but first of all, kudos to to Justin Poirier. He did a great job. That hook, right. the way he was moving, he did, he did he did his thing. I can't take anything away. However, Connor's also with the kind of like a boxing type heavy stance, and it wasn't right. like the normal way he usually moves. So, you know, you're you're more susceptible to those leg kicks, and that that's right. That, those leg kicks are devastating, man. I don't care who you are, if they're hitting your foundation <laughs> like that, man. Look, man. You start squaring up. You start that that hurts. That's that's what it's meant to do. That's the point. So that's why I said Dustin Poirier did an excellent job. You know the amount of the diamond Dustin Poirier. But I, I like Dustin Poirier. I like Conor McGregor a lot for different reasons. You know I love Habib too, but for a different reason. But Conor McGregor right. brought money to the game, right? Eyes to the game. People right. like him or or dislike him or hate, say they hate him in the sport. They all want to fight him. Right, because they want that paper, you know. And not only that, but he, he indirectly or directly, he brought more money to the game. He did, he did. You had him on these talk shows. You had him on this. He fought Floyd Mayweather. Come on, man. That the, the whole world was watching, and because of that, right. he gets to ask for, to you know, uh, historically, whatever he asked for, he gets. So. Why would right. you think it'd be different now? The guy has the whiskey thing, which he sold. He's got so many things going on. He is a shot caller. He doesn't need to go there to fight. He wants to go there to fight. He don't need, he's not doing the paycheck to paycheck or like when he was on social welfare. No, now he he's able to help people out and, and do his things. But but he did a lot for the sport. Well, I mean, I'm not, you know, some people talk about, oh, when he went to jail, when he did those things. Look, man, I'm not even talking about that. Even that brought eyes, you know, but some of it is sad, which I don't agree with, but I know, he, you know, you live and learn and you move on. But hell if he didn't take great notes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look what he's doing, man. Just like Floyd Mayweather, another one who took hella notes. You know, they would say, oh, he can't read it. I said, well, he took great notes. He, he, he knows how to read the situation. That guy got more money than he knows what to do with Floyd Mayweather. And he was. As far as boxing goes, as far as wins go, boxing, who can deny that kid, man? Who can deny him? Who yeah, beat look him? at um, nobody. Look at um, you got like since we're on the subject of boxing, I mean, you got you got uh, Jake Paul who wants to you know who wanted to box Conor McGregor because he understands the kind of money Conor McGregor brings into you know the pay per view. <laughs> yeah. 
but he's uh, boxing uh, Ben Askren. And everybody's kind of like a little bit like 50-50 on uh, Ben Askren mm-hmm. fighting Jake Paul because even though Jake Paul's a YouTuber in a lot of people's eyes, I see him putting in work, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the ring, the mat, or the cage, whatever you want to say, it never lies. When you enter the cage, the ring, or grapple on the mats or whatever, it's going to let you know, like, they, ne- they never lie. You know, so it's, you know, I, you know, part of me, it's like, I want Ben to win because if Jake Paul pulls this off and knocks out or wins against Ben Askren, then he's going to say, I'm, you know, I could, you know, I could beat up MMA fighters and stuff like that. It's just like when uh, you remember many years ago when um, Tim Sylvia, uh, Tim Sylvia fought Ray Mercer. I remember that. And Ray he Mercer knocked him out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of, a lot of boxing fans have said, you see, this is what happens when MMA fighters fight um, boxes. And then you got uh, Randy, the natural courtour who kind of got revenge for MMA when he beat James Tony. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's like, yeah, that's, that's Randy Couture. To me, on, this is like, to me, if you want to think on, think about it on a, uh, on a series right now, it, with uh, the way things are, you know, boxing and MMA are one and one. Well, okay. You can't, you know, well, I'm sorry. Boxing has two wins. MMA has one win depends on the field or whatever you want to, you know, call it, but it's just, is this going to be interesting, man? Like, I'm really, honestly, I'm not going to really watch it because uh, I don't, I don't really want to give any money to Jake Paul. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I am hoping, I am hoping that Ben pulls it off. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping as well. It's just uh, traditionally his, uh, when you look at his, uh, well, his wins, his MMA record prior to UFC, he right. was, uh, a champion and, you know, or a champion over there at one and he was but he had a gra- always had that grappling heavy style you had to worry about it yeah wrestling. and you know um, you know the crazy thing is um even though he got knocked out in his uh final mma fight it was a knee that knocked him out not a punch so yeah. oh yeah when he fought um, uh masvidal and then he fought uh yeah uh, and then uh, when he fought uh uh this what's guy, his uh, name um I remember when he fought Damian Maya. Well, because his first fight was against. Oh Robbie. yeah, when he fought. That fight was a little funny for me. Robbie I, don't Paul, Robbie yeah. was out. I don't think he was out. But I can see yeah. why Herb D made that call with because it on. But it's really hard, you know. I, I'm not a ref, so I can't say. You know, but. Right. Then he fought him. Then he fought a uh, 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 Damian Maya. That fight was, you know. Going well for Damian Maya, you know, he just got the submission and whatnot, and that was pretty much it. But as far as like some people be- believe that that he that that he has a much a chance of beating Jake Paul in a boxing match, as Jake Paul has a chance of beating him in an M- MMA fight. If it was MMA, he'd be mopped the floor with Jake Paul. He mopped the floor right. with him. I have no doubts about that. Boxing, if he can use certain things that he can employ. You know, like, uh, that's fine. But, like, traditional striking stuff, you know, maybe not. But, again, sometimes that awkward style, or sometimes, you know, a guy does something, makes you miss just this much. He may use some of that grappling stuff. He may use, like, this, or certain uh, moves and stuff. But, you know, I've I, I, I seen Jake Paul put in that work. And, you know, kudos to the people who's, who's making the money. Do He's a bigger guy. Do I think that he would have done well against uh, – McGregor, McGregor's a different animal. McGregor's a striker. <laughs> He's a striker. This guy's I, a, I think, a grappler. For I him. think. I think if um, if McGregor fights uh, boxing again, like out of the out of the uh, Paul brothers, I think he'd have to fight Logan. Record wise, you know what I'm saying? Because they're both they both have the same identical record. Let's face it, Logan Paul's about to be 0 and 2 if he after he fights Mayweather. Yeah, that's Mayweather's so gonna think, kick his ass. It, I mean, he's way not, bigger, and and he can just, you can you always have that job where you can hurt the guy, but Mayweather's just too. 
he stays in shape. He's he's gonna be too much for him. Even if he doesn't knock him out, he's gonna just you know pizzazz him, beat him up, and it's just that's just the way he you know Mayweather. You come to expect that from him, <laughs> like you know, like you try to count him out. Right. Think about all those other times and go, you know. But again, um, that fight I would like to see. You know, I, I I'm gonna have to edge a little bit with uh, with uh, with Paul on that in a boxing match, you know, unless, unless this guy pulls out something crazy out of his hat, you know, which can happen, but because it's a combat sport right. and competitor. But aside from that, um, well, yeah, we, we, we also have some uh, great fights coming up soon. I want to be able to cover that as well. Uh, I'll be covering also uh, um, a female fighter from uh, mm-hmm. New York state. Yeah. Um, um, Showing a bam bam arms arms. We were trying to just finalize when we're going to be able to uh, to uh, get that together, um, and other fighters, uh, several other female fighters, and so and some fighters from uh, you know just other organizations, uh, mm-hmm. from California, from the Midwest, from from New York, from all over and and overseas as well. Uh, waiting for somebody to translate a little bit because you know I I, I don't speak certain languages, <laughs> but they speak the universal language. You've got to see this Thai fighter, man. This girl's like <laughs> it's like bricks. But um, and then you you have uh yourself. I look forward to seeing you again, seeing your 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 group and your movement forward. You know, I'm always I always like to see that. I always like to see people think sometimes outside the box. Sometimes you make your own box, you know, whatever. But I look forward to that, and uh, you know, right. and, and and a follow up, and definitely when 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 you start your uh, show, I'll definitely be on there as well. Uh, but uh, right. shout out always, man, to to you and 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 grinders like yourself, man. And you keep moving forward as usual. And uh, look, man, I I I have also the. To, to do this kid, I want to give him a shout out, Justin Kid Montalvo from Long Island. He uh, won his fight. It was New York against Florida. He won Chris body shots. He's, he's, this is uh, you know, he's just starting. Nice. Those. Chris, that kid is he's he's so nice, man. And 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 he's a sweetheart of a kid. Yeah, man. Body, sweetheart of a kid. Body shots make the body shots even make the strongest guys lean over. <laughs> yeah, I, I like, can see it, it because when when dude shot. And Justin sprawled out. He got that underhook against the cage, and then I could see he, he did the thing again. But he would like as before, you know, starts up. He would hit those body shots, and it it was a a, a left to to liver, and and I knew it was over. I was like, oh, when they drop like that, because no one drops like that. Huh. That shell that drops, like oh, he kept going. I said, yeah, that's over. And and he's a a, a great fighter. Uh, man, that, that that kid is great, and and I did a few more interviews with some fighters out of Law MMA. It's a great gym there in Long Island. Nice. Uh, really, really, really good guys, you know. And uh, I I want to get more like to the to the West Coast. Can you hear me? <laughs> West Coast, man. West Coast, West well, Coast. The crazy thing is, the interesting thing is, even though I'm a West Coast guy, I am trying to uh, fight on this. Uh, on for this promotion out in uh, Florida, and yeah, Florida, so, they're blowing up with that. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, Rise uh, MMA, you know, get at me. You know, uh, I've been waiting, man. And um, there's, you know, there's two fighters that I really want to fight at super heavyweight. And you know, don't get me wrong, I love Rise MMA and all that kind of stuff out there in like Florida. I believe they're out in Miami, mm-hmm. but like right now, it's kind of like. Something, you know, something got to give. I know they're getting the messages to uh, these fighters, and I know they're seeing it. You know, one fighter doesn't want to fight until probably sometime in the summer, but uh, this other fighter um, is interesting. So I'll tell you quickly about this one fighter. Me and him fought back in 2018, and we drew. He's the fighter I told you about who had medical um, issues, like with the commission out in Utah. Uh-huh. And the crazy thing is, you know, on on the post for Rise, you know, I signed up and uh, he was right under it saying, yeah, sign me up. I'm ready to go. And then, you know, of course, I'm going to do my emo And I'm just like, to me, it's like, 
you say you're not afraid of me, but at the same time, the first fight, like the first one, I'll give you, I'll give it to you. It was more of like a, uh, when I tried to make the rematch the first time, you had, you had a medical issue. The second time, the promotion could not do anything because COVID shut it down. But the third time, when we tried to do this whole rematch thing in Utah, mm-hmm. you had he had an issue with the metal with the commission. My thing is, you knew you know how medical paperwork works. You've done this on four occasions. You know that a doctor has to sign off on your paperwork at all times. And um, yeah. when you try to cuss out a commission and telling them about you know. Why didn't you take my, you know, effing whatever, my my paperwork? To me, that's like you knew what you were doing to make this to where this fight did not happen. Uh-huh. Then you have the nerve to go to my gym where I was training at at the time. And like probably a few days later, up in the gym where I was uh, getting my work in at the time, uh-huh. you know, one of my boys, uh, Jamal, I uh, rolled with this guy and um, said, I cannot believe this. You did, you would have killed this guy. I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I try to be respectful of everybody. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I respect everybody. But when you disrespect me and you throw, you know, you throw this, you know, bravado at me and all that kind of stuff saying that you want to fight me. And then when we try to set it up on a couple of occasions, yeah, you, stub you your decide toe, to kind of stuff. <laughs> you step on you you mess it up it's like bro you need to retire now yeah, this guy goes by the name of anthony womack he is his name's you know big mac whatever uh sin city gamer on uh instagram so my thing is this if rise has contacted you and i know they reached mm-hmm. out to you on several occasions and you haven't responded then what's going on here like what's up yeah because to me, I know you try. I know you're you're claiming that you're not afraid of me, and if that's <laughs> the case, if that's the case, you would have done anything you can to make the last fight happen and to make this fight happen. So I'm thinking that you, you like having the title of a mixed martial artist, but you don't like uh, putting in the um, in the necessary work to make the fights happen. Yeah, you, you got know, it. You can. I don't know how you train. I don't know how he trains, whatever the case may be. But my thing is, you know, the paperwork process, you know how this works. Right. And it's like, the reason why I want to fight this guy is because if I move on from him, say I went, you know, I win four or five in a row as an amateur and then I go pro and I win three or four in a row, you know what he's going to say. Every time you draw with a person, well, He's doing really good now, but he never beat me. You know what I'm saying? And even though we fought, it wasn't like, uh, I won't say it was like a barn burner or anything like that, but everybody told me that I won that fight. Mm -hmm. You know? And it was because of some stupid point deduction, they decided to make it a draw, which I really didn't um, agree with. And even if I would have made a... um, uh, you know, a plea to the commission, it would still remain the same. Other yeah, than was, no contest or, or you know, it, you know, it's like to me, it's like, it's like, what were these judges? What were these judges looking at to, to make it seem that me and him are neck and neck? Because yeah. I was the one initiating a lot of the, you know, a lot of the uh, action. And the thing is, when he was hugging me around the neck, I, I, I admit it, you know. The first time I grabbed the cage, I, I did that. I admit that. But the second time I held my hands up like this and I was up against the cage. I held my hands like this, looking at the ref. I'm like, look, he's not doing anything. You know what I'm saying? So, so to me, that's what made me, you know, mad about the situation. It's like, why is it a draw when I'm the one trying to, you know, initiate the, uh, the action, action yeah. I'm punching, you know, I'm throwing kicks, I'm staying busy. Aggressive. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm I'm being the aggressive, aggressive one. Yeah. So to me, it's like this. I've given this, I'm giving this guy one opportunity to, you know, make this happen. 
you know, I'll to make, make sure I'll make sure I'll make, an, happen I'll, I'll make sure it. I'll, I'll put something on this. So I was just looking them up. What, what you saw me looking, <laughs> looking them up. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely work on that because, uh, you know, you guys are fighters and, you know, if he wants to uh, boost his career too, I guess he's in the right business. See, the beautiful thing about being a fighter is that well, that you're able to, whatever whatever yeah. feelings you have, whatever, you're going to get paid to take it <laughs> to, to, you know, well, to try you know, to work that out. My thing, is, my thing is, I just don't want him to do this to anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, um, you you try to say that you know, you're a fighter, whatever, you know, that you're not scared, but it's just like the whole process of to get the fight to happen, you were, you were lagging the majority of the time. And when you try to do everything at the last minute, you get mad at the commission, at the powers that be, and you cuss them out knowing dang well, if you cuss out a, a, a commission official, they will most likely not make that fight happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So to me, it's like uh, definitely, game, definitely, and, definitely uh, not I the people stay. you want to be doing that to. Definitely not the people you want to do that exactly. to. Exactly. Definitely, because that's that's let's exactly. let's so, let's call it so, let's call it spade a spade. They're not your friends. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you know, but uh, you know right. that's that's they're not. They're, you know, but you know, sometimes right. I've seen them do I, things where they're not doing you know any favors for people. They just do make some poor decisions or right. whatever that I don't agree with, but you know, whatever the case may be, I, I definitely would like to see that too, man. And uh, I definitely would like to follow up with you, do another show covering uh, oh, of course. fights, man. All right. And yeah. uh, anytime. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, man. We have Eman, Iman, Iman, the main. Iman, the main man, Gregor. Yes. Gregor. You can't miss him. And he's an entrepreneur. He's going to have a great show as well. Tremendous person, tremendous human being, and uh, very principled. Very principled. And I appreciate your time, man. East Coast, West yeah, I just like, I just like <laughs> to York. give a quick shout out. To, yes. Sorry. I just got to give a quick shout out to the big boy squad, uh, Made Life. Uh, my, my boy, Trap Gambino, showing up. Jamal Harris, uh, Trent Jordan Lee. Of course, um, I like to thank my wife because without her, you know, none of this would be uh, possible. That's um, mega points. Ching, ching. You know, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> um, shout out to Master Ricardo in Las Vegas. You okay. know, he's a guy I, um, who I, um, I'm training under to get my, uh, my road to black, uh, to be in a BJJ black belt. And just everybody who's helped me out, man. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for following my career. And uh, hopefully I can make something happen real soon to where I can get back in there and do what I like. And let the people know where they can find you online on, okay. on, on different you social media me, platforms. Yeah, so um, you can find me on Twitter at Iman Gregor. You can find me on Instagram at Iman Gregor. You can find me on Facebook at Iman. Um, I have two. I have Iman Gregor, and then I have a fight page called Iman the Main Event Gregor. It's at like 530 likes. So hopefully after this, it'll be, uh, it'll be higher. Um, on Instagram, I got like 2,500 followers. Right. So those are the places you can fo- um, you can find me. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's I have a-, a YouTube page, but it's not really. It's like not active. So we'll be working on that. I know you're working page, on that. But it's not really active right now. That's all right, man. We got the East Coast, New York over here. You got the West Coast, Cali over there, giving coverage from both sides, man. Bless up as usual. It's amazing, man. It was, it was great chatting with you, man. And I appreciate your time as well. Thank you so much for having me. No problem, man. All right, man. Hey, Chico. Don't forget to subscribe, man. Okay? Cap Combat Sports.